Something is very strange about Soul Key lately. Guys, welcome back to another StarCraft ladder battle. I'm going to be taking a look at this man right here. Soul Key spawning in the bottom right hand corner. A bunch of games of him playing off race. And I don't know if he's getting a big head, if he's getting a little bit too confident lately. But he's been playing a lot of off race. So we're only a couple of days away from the SSL finals. And Sulky, my man, put 11 games of off race on the ladder yesterday. So he's not exactly taking it that seriously. He's not, uh, you know, if he's playing 11 games of Terran and Protoss uh, on the ladder a day when, you know, he's got his finals coming up. And he's supposed to be playing Zerg. I mean, is he really underestimating Sharp that much? Could we see an upset where Sharp actually wins? I don't know. But it feels like my man's Sharp being a little bit uh, disrespected. He's being a little bit underestimated. So we'll see. Snow uh, Soul Key is an absolute god he's just about achieved that bonjour status status if he gets a third finals win in a row i think that has been achieved maybe at this point he feels like he just he can't do any wrong like he's already practiced everything that he needs to uh, he knows exactly how he's gonna play but i'm sure that sharp is in the war room right now just gaming out exactly how to try and beat uh, this almost unstoppable Zerg player. He's got to find some way to catch him off guard. And yeah, I just, I don't know why Soul Key would be playing this much random, this much off race. Maybe he does want to do some sort of a random run in the future. If he gets three in a row, maybe, maybe that's the way to go because you don't want uh, the ASL to start like target banning or target... Uh, choosing maps to try and beat you um like they did with flash they start targeting zerg and uh you know setting up the map pool so that they just can't win that wouldn't be any fun so maybe he will go for a random run afterwards maybe he'll try to even usurp the king flash take like a, f a fourth asl victory would be absolutely insane so close he just barely gets that pr uh, sev Nice job. I didn't really talk about who the Protoss player is this game. It's actually Quickly. Quickly, who I've talked about a lot on the channel, uh, who I have casted a lot of games of. Uh, many of you guys know him. He is a pretty decent Protoss player. He's an up-and-comer. I'm, I'm really on the lookout for good Protoss players. I think that Protoss needs another Bonjoa. They need somebody who can... Uh, get some wins here in ASL and I just I don't know who it's gonna be. I don't it doesn't feel like it's going to be Best or snow even though they've had so many good years uh, Of brood war under their belt. They've done so well in the past They just it feels like they have some sort of issue with performing in the uh, ASL and we need somebody like a rain who actually doesn't play you know, League of Legends most of the time on the side, you know? He's got to actually... We need a Rain who actually focuses on the game, who really takes it seriously. And uh, I don't know if Quickly is going to be that guy or... It's it's somebody. Somebody is going to rise up and take, you know, the lead. Take the, take the helm for Protoss. And I'm not sure who it's going to be. Look at this Vulture coming into... Uh, poke at the wall a little bit crazy to not leave a dragoon back at home but he does have one on the way so as it pops out we'll be able to drive this vulture back yeah it could be anyone guys it could be any of these protoss players somebody is gonna have to take that helm we're just not sure who yet robotics facility on the way Range is coming up as well. SCV's going to try and run by. Can he get the block with these zealots? Should be able to. There's no way this should get by. Yeah, there you go. 
Well done. And the SUV will go down. Mine's going to be placed out around the map. This uh, Dragoon's caught on a little bit of an island, isn't it? Kind of a bit stuck out. Uh, over in this position. Uh-oh, he's going to walk into that mine. Oops. That took some damage. Well, he was running away technically from the mine, so it doesn't take as much damage. Doesn't even take any hull damage, which is fantastic. Usually you'll lose about 10 to 20% of that health uh, if the mine connects cleanly. But as you can see, not quite the clean connection that Sulky was hoping for. Kind of weird to even think about Sulky playing Terran, but he's doing a pretty good job so far. Like he's got the mines out everywhere. He has his natural up. He hasn't had to build a bunker even. He's cut a lot of things. He's cutting a lot of corners, getting his armory out very early. Looks like he wants to take his third base super fast. Too. Look at that. Six minute and eight second third base. Sick. Absolutely sick. Before the Protoss player even throws down his third, which is crazy. And we'll be grabbing that now. What can quickly do against this? Cross map. Uh, kickback. Very hard to deal with. He's getting ready for a drop. As you can see, Dragoon spread out everywhere. He's expecting something cheeky from Sulky, but it's a very cheeky macro play. Engineering bay on the way off of one factory. I guess it has to be done. Um, just due to the fact he has so little... Uh, in terms of information about what's going on with Quickly, he, you'd never really like to go one factory into eBay, but since he's gone for the three command centers so quickly, I guess the eBay getting it out this early, he's not going to have much army to work with, but at least he'll have detection in case there's a DT coming. He will have the ring around his base as well to hopefully ward away that shuttle when it finally comes. We don't have shuttle out just yet, but Gravitic Drive is on the way, so that uh, Reaver and shuttle are going to be out soon. Transferring some workers. He's hardly got enough workers for each patch, for each mineral patch at each of these bases, but I think he's just barely got enough. He's going to have a huge influx of minerals, though, as his third base comes online, and that'll help him to get all these turrets out. And it'll help him to quickly add on a bunch more factories here in a moment. Supply depots being thrown down. Kind of an awkward position for that. I wonder what the thought process is for a supply depot like this spot. Is that to make it harder for the Reaver to land there? Like this might be out of range, right? If you just fill that area up with buildings, I guess you can't drop a Reaver there. Got a pretty nice setup. Quickly back at home. Just sitting on two gateways. Starting to clean out mines now, finally. He will be taking a base soon. Doesn't seem like Sulky's in any position to deny that either. 12 o'clock going to be taken. A fourth base comes online. Quickly's realized that, oh, you, you've taken such a quick third base. I have so much time. I have so much time to do whatever I want. Uh, but... I do need to get on it right away, and he will be going into a Stargate. Will it be for two base carrier or or three base carrier, or is he going to? Yeah, it's going to be carrier. Okay, right on into carrier. Let's go quickly. Four base, although they won't be lasting too long. Maybe he can get start taking bases out on the map. Like take a base like this over here. Maybe a base like that. Just start snagging bases up around the map and try to play a bit of an island hopping game. Nice scan. We glad we caught that. Triple, no, double Stargate with the fleet beacon on the way. Very nice information there. Looks like the Reaver got killed. Wait. I'll have to picture and picture that. Reaver just died. A little bit unfortunate there. Seems like he landed at the front. Thought it was out of range and it was just in range of three tanks and got killed. Yikes, that's not a good start. Definitely want to keep that Reaver alive as it's kind of your lifeline while going into carrier play. Uh, we're going to have a huge factory explosion. In fact, it's already kind of done. Factories are finished. Double upgrades 
are going to be amazing here as well. Uh, where is the science facility? I guess it's floating somewhere. Science facility must be floating somewhere, but we don't have plus two started just yet. That plus two, very important for the Goliaths. Need that plus two to take out the interceptors just that little bit faster. What is this? Is it just walking through the minefield? Kind of funny. Setting up in front of the Terran natural. But the overall supply is looking fantastic for Solki. He's just going to be slamming out tanks and vultures here uh, as he gets ready for this all out attack. Two carriers are about to pop. Oh, a run by into the natural. That's not good. Right before uh, carriers start to come out, we're going to get a run by and a whole bunch of probes die. Well, it's not too bad. I guess he managed to take out the vultures with reavers there. And here comes that push. These reavers taking a lot of damage. We're not exactly sure what from. Might have to do even more picture and picture action. Try and catch all of the moments in this game. Because we are starting to ramp up now. Uh, the reavers. Oh, one of them going to go down. Only killing off a couple of vultures. That's not what he was looking for. That's for sure. And Solki is going to push up really hard and fast. Getting up towards this 12 o'clock base. Now you can still make carriers off of three, uh, three bases and be semi-okay. But you really don't want to be losing this fourth base. Two carriers are out. Carrier number three and four on the way. Dropping zealots on top of all of this. Trying to catch some of these uh, reinforcing units. But the main army has reached the fourth base. And I, I'm thinking this is going to go down really quick. Not much that quickly can do about it. He's not even got zealot speed at the moment. And he's not researching it either. He's just hoping that he can get over. Cut off some reinforcements. Do some damage with these reavers. Maybe kill off a few tanks here and there. And just buy enough time to somehow get these carriers out in high enough numbers to defeat this vehicle upgrade at number two. Uh, weapons upgrade number two is on the way. Still don't see where that science facility is. Oh, there it is. Science facility down in the bottom center of the base. Army going to come forward here. That's a lot of tanks. Zealot's going to be dropped right in the middle of this. Whoa, that was a huge drag of damage from those tanks. Just all lighting up the Zealots on top of the tanks. Not the greatest trade for Solki whatsoever. A lot of tanks went down there. And now the Dragoons are actually going to fare pretty well. There's only five tanks remaining. If he gets another round of Zealots and Dragoons out, he might be able to overwhelm this. It's getting close. The Nexus is still alive somehow. Not sure how that happened. He's actually going to head up there and finish that off. Just make sure that he doesn't leave that alive. Um... At the end of the day, that is a really important kill. So he goes ahead and picks that off. The carriers are coming forward now. Three carriers in production at a time. Four carriers uh, in this fight. But the Dragoons are getting absolutely splattered. Really does need to back away. I would love to see him just go over this high ground and start hitting the tanks. Rather than trying to fight in the middle where they could actually be killed. This is like... This is free real estate. Just go stand... Put the carriers over here and start hitting these. And you should be able to actually save that base. However, it's a little bit late. Carrier number is getting high. We're on five carriers now. I'm going to push out. Try to take a fourth at center left. Time for Solki to take another base as well. He's got the army together. Pushing down. And sweeping along the bottom side. This is not a great position for the carriers to be in. You do not want to allow the Goliaths to dive on top of this. To start to take this fight. No zealots in the army. So as soon as the tanks siege up, he has to back away. Big hits on this one carrier. Almost taking it down. What are we at total for carriers now? Seven. Seven carriers is getting pretty scary. That's a scary number. And it's only going to get higher. 
Carrier 8, 9, and 10 are about to pop out. They still need their interceptors, so it's going to take some time, but that will be online pretty soon. Probe's being transferred pretty darn early. Uh, it's not quite that time yet. Parking over this high ground should be the, the proper move for Sulky in this position. Just keep building interceptors, stay over this high ground, and eventually bring up enough zealots to clear this. Still doesn't have zealot speed, I don't think, and he's focusing on dragoons and reavers. It's no storm or anything like that to deal with these huge clumps of Goliath. Still picking off Goliath after Goliath from this high ground. Has money to continue to make interceptors, but the interceptors are dying so fast. This is becoming a little bit untenable. He's going to have to change tactics, I think. Uh, maybe give up the center left. Just let it go and go for a counterattack. That might be the right call. If he can break this base, kill that. This is almost mined out. This is almost mined out. There's only one more location really to go. Oh, 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 oh. He's going to lose a carrier. Diving on top of that one. Not quite able to take it out though. What the heck? He's just going to go back? He's just going to leave these uh, these probes? Keep Leaves the Nexus alive as well. That's kind of crazy. Reaver's slugging it out across the map. They're going to get caught in the middle. A lot of this is going to get taken out. Carriers coming into that third base. Taking out some of these Goliaths. There are quite a few coming out at a time. We've got eight Goliaths at a time, which is a significant anti-air to deal with these carriers. Seven. There must be eight and nine. Or eight, nine, and ten back at home. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, it's like surrounding the the carriers, but they're on high ground. They don't care. Let's just chill here. Kill this uh, command center. Should go down in a moment. Let's see the uh, plus two. Pretty reasonable. Well, it really needs to save this base. Ah, oh, the nexus goes down. That is unfortunate. Oh. Goliath's on all sides now. He's going to have to take a fight. I think you take the fight this direction. Kill the, the Goliath on high ground, and then you can just park over this high ground. Yeah, you're not going to want to try and run out this direction. Uh, I think... Wow. Pushing in? Where are those carriers? There's three carriers back at home. They could easily deal with that. Okay, they are going to be sent back to kill these tanks. But running out of money, he's got 1500 in the bank, but he really needs another Nexus. Quickly is very soon going to run out of money altogether. He loses a carrier. Jumping on top of these carriers once again. Solki is still making tons of Goliaths, but he's been losing a lot of, it, of his SCVs. Those tanks were taken out over at Quickly's doorstep. If he comes down with those three carriers and stops this mining, things could get really out of control. Uh, first of all, might want to take out the Vulture over here, but... This battle is raging still in the third base. Still, I don't know how he has 1,700 minerals, guys. <laughs> I guess he's only making interceptors. That is it. He's got five interceptors in production, nothing else. And he's finally found a way out of this... Uh, Kind of sticky situation. He's going to head north. Uh, I think that actually this could be chased down though. This might have been a bad idea. Running out. Even though there was an opening. The Goliaths are a little bit too quick. And there's no high ground for quickly to hide over top of. So yeah that turned out to be a really bad plan. <laughs> Flying out that direction was not the right call. I think he just could have stayed in this area. Keep on fighting, keep on harassing, and then attack over to this spot. And the Goliaths would have had to be pulled in two separate directions. Now, they could all be concentrated on dealing with these three carriers over at the center right. GG is called. Soul Key takes out quickly with his Terran. Well, that was impressive to see. And against Carrier as well. This guy, he can do it all. And I think he could potentially play at random in an ASL. It would be fun to watch. That is for sure. Maybe honing those skills now on the ladder. Let's jump into our next game and see what Solki can bring out. All right, we're going to jump into a PvP now. Solki in the top left-hand corner, quickly down in the bottom left. And 
for some reason i wasn't able to watch this on battle.net i have no idea why it just wouldn't load so yeah there's some sort of error i i, I just don't know i don't know i wasn't able to find any other really good pvps uh with soul keys so this is what we're this is what we're going with we're using shield battery it's a third party platform you can play brood war on uh it's totally free and it uh gives much better latency if you're having trouble getting good latency connection with uh, other players around the globe shield battery is a great option if battle.net ever dies shield battery will be there to replace it uh, i'll leave a link or shield battery in the description i'm not sponsoring anything but i think they are an excellent excellent platform the only thing that's wrong with them in my opinion is the ui for uh doing replay casting so i'll have to put like a bar over the replay progress so that it doesn't spoil you guys and i can't take away uh any parts of this without removing the map so if i take this away you know the map is just gone so that's a little bit unfortunate that's why i don't usually use shield battery to watch replays it would be great if they could change that wink wink nudge nudge shield battery if you're watching this uh he is a viewer of the channel so he may indeed be watching this and uh, i would definitely use your platform way more if that was uh, patched if that was fixed so i hope that does come into play at some point in the future now we're watching a pvp so uh, the default is I really don't care that much. However, I am going to try and watch this one as best I can. Try to understand what's going on. Uh, just for fun, because we're checking out Sulky in his PvP. And if it's actually viable to play PvP as a Zerg player, could Sulky... Well, I don't even really categorize Sulky as just a Zerg player. This guy is a phenom. He is a next level... Uh, you know, demi demigod. I don't even know what to say. He's opening the pretty much exact same build as what Quickly is doing, putting that robotics facility pretty near the ramp. There was a bunch of chatter going on at the beginning of this game. I translated it, but I didn't really understand what the heck they were talking about. Uh, I think they were talking about a tournament that was upcoming for Quickly, but you know. What they didn't talk about was the tournament that was coming up uh, this week, or next week, excuse me. Uh, it's called the ASL, you might have heard of it. And Sulky is not even participating, not even trying to get ready. As you can see, just gaming hard when it comes to uh, playing his own race is not even interested in it just going to be gaming on the ladder for funsies and it looks like double gateway out of quickly is there going to be a second gateway for sulky no he's going to build his nexus so the build's kind of diverging here finally both players getting their reaver both players pumping Dragoons, but there's going to be more Dragoons on the field for Quickly. Less for Sulky, but a much faster Nexus for Sulky. And so we'll have to see some punishment for that. Otherwise, Sulky is going to gain a large lead. Quickly going to get over here. Then immediately with the Observer, sees the Nexus. And that's all he really needs to know. He just needs to know, wow, you're going for a pretty quick Nexus. Of course, getting in there and seeing the... Uh, Reaver tech as well is great. See if you can get in there. Oh, Observer hasn't gone across, across the map for Sulky yet. I think he might have seen the Observer flying into his main, but he wants to keep his uh, OBS uh, at the front, I guess. Once you see the OBS of your opponent, you know that they're not, they're not going DT. And so you can just send your OBS across the map. Go find out what they're doing. Uh, you know, the timing on their Nexus and all that good stuff. Dragoons are going to be coming up. He knows he has to pressure. We have Gravitic Drive on the way quickly. Sending out a probe for probably a, just a spotter pylon. Something to see the Reavers coming across the map. His first Reaver is about to be picked up into this shuttle. Going to be sent over here. 
to the front. Let's see if he can break through potentially. That's the concave on the other side of this bridge, but doesn't have more dragoons than Sulky somehow. Sulky's still making a lot of dragoons, and he's got his second gateway out as well at this point. Drop landing in the front. Gonna be a bit of a skirmish between these dragoons and reavers. Good pick up there. Don't want to be it, taking any damage on that shuttle just yet. Gravitic drive is almost done, so. If we start to lose the shuttle, or if we lose a bunch of health points on the shuttle, it would be very painful before that upgrade finally kicks in. It's a very expensive upgrade. Don't want to be throwing away your shuttle before that comes online. Now, second reavers coming out. Will he go back home to pick that up? Is he going to stay here and wait it out? Quickly. Hasn't added any more gateways just yet. Oh, go to run forward. Here we go. Gets the shuttle. That's huge. That is huge. Picking up that shuttle. Absolute massive pickup for Sulky. He, if he has his own shuttle coming out in a moment, there's a potential counterattack. There's a potential attack timing for Sulky where he could maybe come across the map, deal some real damage. There's just uh, Reavers popping out at the moment. So if he goes across... And takes a good fight. You know, picks up the Reavers and juggles them uh, while fighting. Oh, man. Reaver damage is going to be researched by quickly. That is interesting. Trying to take a shot with that Reaver. Gets a big one in the middle of this group. He needs to shoot the uh, Reaver with his Reaver. And then pick up his Reavers so they don't get shot back. He's failing to shoot at all. He hasn't even done any damage with the Reaver so far. Great pulling back from quickly really an excellent engagement gets so much damage with his reavers and the reavers of sulky did literally nothing that's crazy dive into the main now looking for some damage on a few of these probes Ooh. Ooh, okay that's gonna dud that was very close though not much damage going on shuttle going across the map for quickly though could get a lot let's see over in the natural. Going for some kills. Oh, that was a nice shot there. Very good. Getting a couple more kills there at the end as well. Going after the shuttle. Can he pick up this last reaver? So he will get another kill on another dragoon. But going into the main base now. Can he get some more big kills? Oh, I think he will. Here we go. 14 kills on that reaver now. Even more kills go down before he picks up and evacuates. Insane damage. 23 workers remain for Soul Key. That was massive. Massive damage. Quickly even has more supply now. Of course, it's a little bit misleading because he has 20 more workers. But nearly 20 supply up over Soul Key. He's going to come back in again. Kill off a few more probes. Back at home. Does he have Reavers ready? Oh, God. Okay, that's not going to connect. It was looking close, though. He has a Reaver back at home. He does not have a shuttle, though. He's paying attention to a Reaver on his opponent's side of the map and not these Reavers pushing into his natural, now pulling everything together. But the uh, Dragoons are precariously placed in the mineral line. Would be some amazing hits if he goes for those Dragoons. Could get huge amounts of probe damage at the same time. One Reaver comes out. It's getting pretty big shots in the middle of this Dragoon army. But man, quickly is losing this fight. Being pushed back up into the main base. And there's still two Reavers here just smashing the economy. 34 probes remain and he will get back up this ramp with the majority of those. But will he end up losing the Nexus? I think he will. Yeah, this Nexus is gone. Reaver's going to look for some damage. But there's four Reavers at the front now. Wow, Sulky went back home and picked up even more. And with four Reavers down here, are you ever going to be able to break out? Get out of your own base? It seems unlikely. Really does feel like Quickly is a little bit screwed now. He did so much damage with his Reaver harassment. But he's stuck up on his high ground. A cheeky... Uh hidden base down at six o'clock unfortunately it's not too well hidden 
Sulky already sees that with his observer. We're going to send one Dragoon to go ahead and deal with that. Not a bad play at all. We're going to just keep rallying down to the bottom of this ramp. Making sure that quickly will never escape this position. Going to take some pot shots on a Reaver. Nicely done. Gets a Reaver. Can he get a, the shuttle as well? If he picks off the shuttle, there's some hope that maybe he could try to break out of this. He's got a bunch of Zealots ready. The Zealots are going to help to crack down the ramp. Reavers are going to be landed out uh, on the low ground. Trying to get some shots on each other, but just perfect dodges on both sides. Going to run down this ramp now. Oh gosh, he's not doing a great job of running down the ramp. That is for sure. A lot of these Dragoons are just never going to make it down here. While the Reaver is being microed. This army is still stuck in that main base and things are looking desperate now for quickly. He's almost out of minerals in his main. He has to break this right here right now. Going across the map with one Reaver. He's going to try and deal some brutal damage to this probe line. Great hit there in the probe line. Does a lot of damage to quite a few different probes. Doesn't kill too many though. And the shuttle will be pushed away once again. Quickly going to rotate, looking for more damage. Trying to come down this ramp now, sending everything out on a right click. The Reaver doing so much work. He does have uh, Reaver damage as well. Solki does. So uh, with that Reaver, so many kills. 12 kills on this one. Two kills on that one. The Nexus is getting low. It's just slowly dying to these Dragoon phase disruptor shots are gonna run forward try to gun down one of these reavers He gets the one reaver and he gets the uh, Shuttle so both reavers will fall This shuttle very very low and the reaver is about to go down as long as he splits properly uh, There shouldn't be any way for quickly to break out of this He's still got enough dragoons on the low ground to hold him back the long distance mining has become begun actually he wants to go and mine from this base down at six o'clock, but Soul Key using the four Dragoons to one-shot probes. Going to prevent that from happening, at least for now. Quickly going to be sent back to mine at his natural. While the Nexus gets lower and lower. Zealots and one Reaver pushing out. A very hopeful move for Quickly, but I think his hopes are about to be dashed. Here comes seven, eight more. No, seven more. Dragoons and a Reaver in a shuttle. There's no way that he can hold on against this. He knows it. We know it. And he'll have to be calling GG here in a moment. Soul Key taking down quickly in PvP. Would you have ever expected it? GG. He taps out. Soul Key takes this one home. Okay, for this next one, we've got Wee Nanta. Versus Soul Key. We Nanta, also known as Time is Gold. He is 2580 on the ladder. So not a pushover by any stretch, but not a uh, tournament regular or anything like that. He opened up by just typing to Soul Key that it was an honor to meet him and good luck in the finals. And to which Soul Key said thanks. So they definitely know who, or at least. Time is Gold knows who Soul Key is. Maybe these guys have met many times on the ladder before, but uh, this time it's going to be with Terran. Soul Key playing Terran, which should be interesting. I feel like any match where you're versus Zerg, Soul Key should be at an advantage. He should have like a deep knowledge of how to abuse the Zerg race. So I'm interested to see what he's going to try and pull out. Of course, the first Marine moving across the map. Totally standard stuff. Uh, he's actually going to try and catch this uh, drone a little bit. Put some damage on it. Doesn't really do too much to that. He went for a 1 Rex FE. Whereas Time is Gold went for his 12 Hatchery. So there's an opportunity to deal a little bit of damage. To maybe get in and force this first drone away. But I think he was a little slow on the move out with the... Marines, you know, he stopped here to deal that damage to the one drone, so he's not going to be able to get in there and do too much. Unfortunately for Sulky, he's probably just going to have to pull all the way back home. With just three Marines, 
four lings out on the field will definitely shove that away so four marines you can take on the lings especially with an scv block uh, but it's going to be close it's going to be very very close so better to keep the marines back at home and prepare for the next stage of this game what do we have engineering bay on the way so plus one build it's going to be coming down here for soul key straight on into the spire and will this be a four racks plus one or are we going to go for a little bit of a faster factory it remains to be seen fast factory is great against someone who's very heavily committed to mutas so you can get your valkyrie out a little bit quicker but if your opponent is playing more standard trying to get another base out you know get lurk get into lurker deal with the marine move out with just lings and mutas and and hold on that way could be very very strong to go for four racks it just allows you to put so much pressure out there on the Zerg player. They just have to respond to your move out. You have so many Marines. You have uh, kind of a later range timing. But once range finishes, plus one will finish as well. And you can just start to attack everywhere at once, right? You can come down to this base. By the way, this base has two entrances. So a bit interesting to see him take this one. Especially instead of taking this one. Because... This one is on low ground, and it's right next to this one, which is on high ground. Uh, high ground, generally a better base. Uh, just it, just as a rule. As a rule, it's better to have a high high ground base, especially in this matchup. We'll see how that ends up panning out. We've got Sulky scanning the main base. He sees the timing on the eggs. He knows that mutas are coming. Time to get those turrets started because he doesn't want to get caught with his pants down, especially with this build where you don't have range super quick. If you don't have turrets to defend you, the Marines can start to die really, really fast and then things do fall out of control. So, Mutas are going to make their way across. Looking for a kill on this first missile turret on this first SCV. Are they going to get that Marine at least? SCV does survive. Coming in to abuse the Marines while that range is just not quite there yet. Getting a few kills and not taking too much damage on these Mutas either. I like the play so far from Time is Gold. He's going to rip around to the top left. Look for some SCV kills. Now that he's got seven Mutas, it's a perfect time to start that this dive. Going to come in. Three, four, five kills so far. Six kills, potentially. Ah, does lose one Muta. Now needs to back away. No more one-shotting. And the Marines are going to be out on the map. This is enough damage, though. I think he did a fantastic job getting that damage. Sulky gonna move out. He's looking for, I think, that base. Okay, he scanned the natural just to see what was there. He sees a good number of drones, but no sunken colonies. He knows that he can push. And force the mutalists to engage. There's no, like, sunken wall back at home where uh, these mutas can just dive into the Terran main and he can rely on static defense back at home to deal with the marines. So, good movement. Very good movement from these marines. Zerg. Doing the right thing. Getting behind this army. Checking for reinforcements and trying to catch things as they start to move forward. He's got the lings in the way of the reinforcement train as well. Oh boy, that was a mistake. Need to stay a little bit closer to that marine group so we don't lose track of it. And then not fly into it while, <laughs> while we're looking for it as well. It's uh, easier said than done, I know, but... Um, okay, is he going to dive on this? He could have do dove on those reinforcements, but at the same time may have lost the natural, so... He actually pulls back. He's got the 11 mutas together. Gonna start to hit this uh, group of marines from the backside. Pretty good angle there. Does a reasonable job. Uh, but at the same time, this reinforcement train, which he thought about wiping out, but act turned away from at the last moment, is going to make its way down to the third. No sunken colony available there. So 
he has to make a choice between saving his natural and saving his third he's gonna go to move to save the third at the same time the natural is gonna get hit this is gonna be intense pulls the drones away from that third base he's just gonna try and save the drones while killing off the marines going into the third oh god he's waffling he's waffling oh no time is gold waffling back and forth getting pancaked by soul key who's now killing off a bunch of drones these drones over here were sent to the mineral patch in the center right they're gonna be sent back to work now but yeah he needed to make a decision either attack this and hold with the sunken and just a few mutas uh or come back kill this army run the drones and then come back and kill this army but he kind of waffled back and forth a couple of times before finally deciding to go for the natural. Uh, not a great response from Time is Gold. And props to Solki for putting him into that position. That was a well-designed kind of Chinese finger trap there where you really didn't have a good way to uh, get out of it. He needed to make a hard decision in the spur of the moment and Solki while he's able to make those difficult decisions he knows how troublesome they can be and how often players will falter when forced into those situations so the ability to force that out with the Terran race really impressive stuff from Solki so far he's gotten himself a bit of a lead but the game is definitely not over yet. There's still plenty of wiggle room here. There's still plenty of uh, fights to be had. And the muted number is still continuing to harass this uh, little army from Solki. He's getting into his vessels. But he can't really push too much farther forward at the moment. He needs to stay back. Wait for those vessel reinforcements. Otherwise he could get caught by a lurker landmine which may over if he gets if he loses this entire force things can flip on their heads so quickly he needs to get value out of this and it seems like he will as the science vessels meet up that lurker landmine is no longer a factor these lurkers just kind of sitting here on high ground are going to end up... Oh, he's on hold position. But the vessels are present. And so everything will be pushed back. Oh my god, he's just going to run up on top of this. Spreading and splitting the marines pretty well. A lot of these marines are going to go down. But the, all the lurkers will be killed. Okay, go after the vessels. You have to go after the vessels here. These vessel kills are huge. Okay, he has to pull one muta. There it is. He pulls it. One more muta pull? No, he's not going to get both of the vessels. That's unfortunate. Uh, kind of traded out a lot of forces there. A lot of lurkers ended up going down. Wow, 10 kill lurker in the mix. That guy, absolute hero. Didn't even take a single shot, actually. <laughs> Just sitting at the back. He's the only one to survive. He's got 10 kills and full health. That is pretty funny. What do we have over here? A single Marine checking for the fourth base. Sulky gathering up his forces now with three vessels. Can make for a scary attack. Four Scourge mixed in under these mutas. You can hardly see them. You can only see them at a certain angles, really. Looking for an opportunity. To potentially snipe down some of these vessels back at home. Where are the lurkers? Uh-oh. I don't see many lurkers, guys. That'll be at one easy irradiate. That 10 kill lurker gonna die. A very painful death. Slowly burning down. Like he has some sort of fever. All the way from 100% HP to zero. Trying to go after some of these vessels. Will he commit to the dive? Sometimes it can be good. Just go for the dive. Fly in. Hit two vessels and fly out. You might lose a few mutas, but... If he sits here and just keeps irradiating you, you're going to lose way more than just a few mutas. You're going to lose 
a ton of defilers and lurkers over and over again more vessels coming across the map gonna continue to put on that pressure not really focusing on uh, putting out drops or anything like that sulky totally fine just sitting out in this front area and radiating over and over as long as he can see that there's no third base coming or no fourth base coming excuse me he's gonna be cool with that one kill two kills just a few marines going down at that entrance trying to poke losing a couple of marines for that definitely uh, not the worst thing in the world gonna come up and spot this uh, marine with the drone he really does want to take a fourth phase here soon but can't really make it happen he's going for a hydralis defiler play and where are those mutilists now oh where did they go in the main base oh, we got oh we got one muta did i miss the dive i think i might have missed the dive i'll have to picture and picture that doesn't look like he really got too much out of it that is unfortunate he, having those four scourge in mixed in with like eight mutas that's definitely worth two uh, science vessel kills if you do it right the mutas will are the marines will never really target the scourge properly if they're mixed in underneath the mutas and you just go for the go for the dive you have to pull back your science vessels perfectly and maybe even dodge a little bit oh he gets one vessel uh, at the top side of that army still being kind of stuck right now though not quite able to do anything not able to get a fourth base online what whereas a soul key is transitioning uh, he's gonna stay on marine medic i think but he's gonna start pumping out tanks and just having a lot of tanks versus Hydralis Defiler is the best thing that you can have. Oh, getting another vessel. That's pretty good. He's going to spot this dropship as well. Wait a second. That was a very well-placed Scourge. Drops are going to come in. Start to make things really miserable for the Zerg. Uh, we do have, you know, some Defilers, but they haven't consumed yet. You got to get that consume off. Bring some hydras down here as well. There we go. He's consumed now. He's ready. He's got some stuff in the main. Army moving around the outside of the map. Lings are going to come up to potentially deny this base in the top right. Although there are marines ready to defend that as well. Where are those drops? There they are. Drops are going to be sent over towards this fourth. Yeah, he scans the fourth. He sees it. There's some lurkers on high ground, but this side is not really covered. Double D matrix. Interesting. Gonna just run up this ramp and potentially just take out all the lurkers there. Yeah, lurkers are just gonna go down. He has to cancel. That's really unfortunate for time is gold. Let's go for the drop in the main. Here we go. Oh, one of those drop chips gets taken out immediately. A second drop will unload. But I think with just a few hydras coming in, oh my god, it's all fire bats. <laughs> it's all fire bats, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. Sulky just messing around, man. Well, surely that wasn't intentional. Kind of funny, though. Maybe this is the way that Sulky thinks that you can abuse Zerg players by. Just sending in a drop of all fire bats. Yeah, we can just, just bust them open. Nice kill on one of those vessels as well. Sulky discovering the difficulties of keeping his vessels alive against a strong Terran player. Or against a strong Zerg player, excuse me. Good plague there. I just have pretty good upgrades. They're going to be killing off a lot of these Marines and Medics. This are... Uh, base is still alive fourth base gonna come up soon for soul key and his tank count is getting kind of high and we don't see where they are now okay five tanks over on the right hand side another nice plague from time is gold he's gonna start to push everything back as he's taking his fourth base he's gonna grab a fifth and a sixth at the same time so 
just starting to mass expand around the map, hoping that something will stick. Good Dark Swarm there. Gonna force things back a little bit. Does consume one of his own Hydras. Tanks are gonna be set up on high ground, running forward here. Dark Swarm. These Hydras can now run up and kill this Siege Tank, no problem. He's taken a nice position in front of the Natural. However, he won't be able to resupply, and he can't get any more... Uh, defilers to the front with all of this stuff in the way. These tanks just kind of staying mobile, staying active. Pushing things back though is time is gold. He's going to get a nice plague on two of those tanks. Tanks are going to be dropped to just 2 HP. And they will be picked off by a single Hydralisk shot or Ling attack. This one lurker with 8 kills just hanging in there. Holding down the fort. Finally, the Dark Swarm runs out. He will be able to push that back now. But I think that Time is Gold has bought enough space, maybe, to, you know, saturate some of these bases, get some more gas going. He's actually not suffering for gas too badly. He's going to get a few more drones out. And he may get a huge plague on this. Ah, he missed that. That was a golden opportunity to get a big plague on all of these vessels. I kind of missed out on it. That's what you can you have to do that sometimes though, just send defilers out on the map randomly because occasionally you will just run into the Terran army and boom, you get a massive plague and things can flip really really fast. Dark Swarm plague on all of these bio forces, very nicely done there. A lot of that is going to go down. Of course, the science vessels are still alive, which is a bit of a pain. They're going to continue to irradiate, and he can actually walk past this. One lurker on high ground is not going to be enough. That is not going to be enough. Well, I mean, everything is plagued. <laughs> Maybe it will be enough. Nine kills, ten kills. Hydra's coming from behind as well. I guess he holds. Wow, okay. Hero lurker on high ground. I, with plus one attack, it makes such a big difference, by the way. The plus one attack allows the Lurkers to two-shot no matter how many armor upgrades you have. And a triple drop moving around the right-hand side. That's going to be spotted immediately by the Overlord. Uh-oh, boys. Dark Swarm. Lurker under Dark Swarm. Going to be holding down this position. A big plague going down on this. Some of these SCVs and the Command Center. Funny-looking plague there. But that's going to deal a lot of damage to... The command center, he'll probably be able to pick that off with the hydras that he's got here. Of course, a couple of irradiates are going to be quite annoying, killing off most of the hydras, in fact. And a lot of these hydras are just going to run up and die. Meanwhile, the drop over into this fourth base. He's going to continue forward, try to get the drop in the uh, third as well, but both the drop ships go down. Maybe he can get the Nidus Canal. Oh, maybe he can get that. Okay, Plague kind of misses, kind of whiffed. A bit of a whiffed plague. That dropship goes down, going in, trying to head into the main base. Killing off a few drones here, potentially, but a lurker comes forward. Lurker going to kill that off. Nidus has been saved. Time is gold, putting up a very good fight. While taking more bases, getting his supply up. You can see he's only 30 supply behind at the moment. Pushing forward, might get a free science vessel. That would be very... Cost effective. Let's see if he can get it. Okay, will not. Kind of splitting those uh, scourge hits. Running straight up on this high ground. Whoa, where is he going? Oh my god, the lurker is just kind of running in there. And a bunch of vessels being left to just irradiate everything is not a good look. More dropships coming out. Kind of insane to be going for dropships sh still at this point. Um... But, hey, maybe he's uh, spread hard enough, maybe spread thin enough that Solki can get in there and deal a little damage to Time is Gold. Time is Gold putting down sunken colonies, which are not going to be finished uh, in time. And so, without any scourge in position, these drops will get off. That's going to deal a lot of damage over on this center left. But at the same time, getting up this ramp, he kills the single uh, lurker at this ramp. And now it's just Ling and a bunch of Hydras to try and defend this. The Dark Storm goes down, but 
the fire bats under dark swarm will be able to push things back the d matrix was clutch he's gonna kill this fourth base it looks like with the fifth base going down as well i think we're just about out of time yeah I, time is gold not gonna be able to save this one i don't think everything going to die and just like that soul key gets in there and it takes him down uh, if there had been some scourge over at this position if he had had his army kind of blocking for that lurker rather than standing around the nidus canal then maybe he could have held on we could have seen this game go further but soul key is out of control now he is completely out of control we are a long way back in terms of getting our economy fully online if Time is Gold is able to save both of these bases. It's a real game. For sure. Because Ultras are now hitting the field. Uh, he doesn't have plus three armor on the way, unfortunately. He's only, he doesn't even have plus two armor on the way. So maybe uh, I take that back. He's pretty far off from being in a good position. You know, it's three, three, four. Uh, Soul Key, he's already got plus one attack. <laughs> it's It's rough. The plus one attack on the the tanks and you've only got plus one armor on your ultras i don't think you're gonna win that situation time is gold trying to put together some sort of defense he just doesn't have anything he's got a couple of ultras that are actually in his own mineral line dealing damage to his own drones uh, and as sulky pushes forward with this medium-sized force he's still holding back a lot more he's got so many tanks on his side of the map he's got a lot of reinforcements coming out Plague does come down, but everything just going to continuously get irradiated to death with this huge cloud of vessels standing overhead. Just needs to reinforce with that a little bit more. He should be able to break through time is gold. Time is gold is out of time, guys. He is completely out of this game. He's double expanding once again. But he needs to be taking like the whole map at this point if he wants to win this game. Uh, because Sulky is so entrenched. You need to have this base and this base already. And be on the Terran side of the map. Like pushing them in. And you know taking fights. Killing off uh, tanks. But he just can't do that. I mean the tank count is high. Very high. That's a lot of tanks. And when you're in this type of situation. You have to keep it scrappy. You can't allow the Terran player to have that many tanks. He can't even stop the bio forces coming across the map anymore and he will be tapping out here very soon only 50 50 gas in the pocket for time is gold any second now as we speed this one up let's see when he decides to tap out i mean we are so dead we are so so dead maybe time is gold just kind of reveling in the fact that he's playing against sulky um you know, he did say it was a big honor to play against him. Maybe just not wanting that honor to end. He finally taps out, though. Soul Key takes another win. GG. Terran. Soul Key is still very, very scary. I'm going to jump into our next game. I think there's only one matchup left, yeah. Uh, or maybe Protoss versus Zerg. No, that's what we started with, isn't it? Uh, I do want to get to every matchup in this video. Terran versus Terran is going to come up next. Okay, we've got a rematch here between Time is Gold and Soul Key. As you can see, though, it is a PVZ. I think I said I was going to do TVT first. Oops, we'll do that later. We've got Soul Key over here in the top right hand corner. Protoss player extraordinaire. Sending out his probe real nice and early after pylon. Probably will be opening with a forge fast expand. Time is gold. Again, 2500 MMR Zerg player. And yeah, he's, he's a beast. He's strong. You saw from that last game, he is definitely capable of standing toe to toe. Maybe not with the absolute best like Soul Key. But he is very, very strong, even against these pro players. And should be able to give Soul Key a run for his money in this matchup as well. 
probe rotating around just looking for that expansion gonna force that expansion to be taken down at center left which is always a little bit annoying but with the forge fast expand it's really not that big of a deal you're gonna have those hatcheries done in no time anyway just a single pair of links being made and since there's no zealot coming in just gonna only make those two links so that he can get this expansion out now one thing you can do as a brodos player if you see that only two links get made you can just drop a pylon dropping a pylon there is so freaking annoying <laughs> it is so annoying because you really want to get this there you really want to get this base uh as the zerg and uh the two links they just can't they can't kill it they they actually cannot kill the pylon the pylon will finish um if you have two sets of links so four links total then the pylon will die but if you skimped just that little bit extra and made only two links suddenly the pylon delays this hatchery by another like minute <laughs> it's really bad i don't know why we don't see more protoss players do that but for me i i feel like that's the best bang for your buck in terms of pylon blocking once this has already been taken and the zerg is desperate to take this natural blocking that they only build two links oh god it's it is suffering pure suffering and uh yeah that's why i build four links <laughs> that's why i always build four it's so not worth it to only build two and then get pylon blocked you could even do more like you could let the pylon finish if they still refuse to build links you could build a gateway next to it and just continue the blocking it's so freaking or, or just cancel the pylon and restart it it's crazy how much damage you can do how much slow of a slowdown it can be against the zerg player in this early game but we're slowly moving into the next stages no uh layer coming up oh wait there was a layer right it's at the third base okay third base layer so it is going to be more of a standard play from time is gold which uh sulky spotted he saw that uh layer and oh, what did I do? Did I just remove his vision? How did I do that? I think I accidentally clicked it. Bouncing around a little bit too quickly, maybe. Lair is going to finish. Drone is in place. He's ready to put down this spire. Gonna get it out as quickly as possible. Doesn't want to lose too many overlords. This is gonna be sacrificial. As soon as he sees the Stargate, he's probably just gonna send this to the south somewhere over here, try to hide it. <clears throat> As long as you force him to waste a little bit of time trying to find that, uh, you should be good. Should be okay to, you know, not lose too many overlords. Well, he's just going to fly it all the way in. And so I guess this will just die immediately, which is never, never great for the Zerg player. But hey, I think it's going to be okay. Getting into those drone numbers now. We're already up to 30. Should be going up to around 35 may opt to uh, rely on uh, like a five muta defense in order to hold back the zealot timing and then just uh you know continue to pump out drones and eventually switch into hydras i think that would be a pretty reasonable option considering how this game's gone so far there's a spire finishing up just about done he's looking for an overlord but they're all kind of hidden just none of them in the bases right now. Well, this one, I think he just barely missed that one. And so, yeah, he's not really going to lose any overlords at all. There, he finally finds one, but it's too late. Scourge are already on the way. And yeah, I think this is going to be good. This is looking good for Time is Gold. Time is Gold going to lose one overlord, of course, that one that he threw in, the sacrificial. Four mutas on the way. Five mutas is that uh, typical number for dealing with early game zealots maybe a uh, sunken at each base as well if you put a sunken like say here with an evo chamber and you put a sunken there with the hydra den then you can pretty much hold on to maximum 
uh, the, the maximum number of zealots that can be put out on one gateway. There's not really any trouble holding on against that, and just pure drones will likely be coming out from here on. Uh, producing two Stargate Corsair. there. Oh god, I didn't even see that Stargate earlier, but there it is. Double Stargate Corsair coming out for Sulky. This could potentially catch him pretty, pretty off guard. He's going to fly into the natural. Two kills so far. Three, four, five. Oh, this is going great. And he sends in the Scourge. Really good control there. Excellent control. Another Scourge gets in. Beautifully done. He kills two Corsairs. That is some excellent, excellent value. As long as he pops out a bunch of Scourge now, four Corsairs cannot hold on against Scourge. They're just going to get wiped out. You, you don't hit that critical mass. Now, he does want to fight with the Mutas, but I think it would be better to pull back. Just keep the Mutas alive so that they can be still useful against the Zealots a little bit later on. Now, a few drones have gone down, but he's doing a great job of blocking in the natural. Not going to allow these Zealots to slip by. Uh, more Corsairs are going down, and Overlord falls as well, but only three Corsairs remain. He will have to retreat. And so I feel this was a, a very reasonable defense from Time is Gold. And he killed some probes too. So he's going to be feeling pretty good with himself. Pretty happy with himself after that uh, last couple of engagements. Does he have range finished up? I'm not 100% sure on that. Two Zealots running around. Not much on the field for Soul Key at the moment. And he'll be busting up to 45 drones very quickly we're a little light on these two bases i think over here at the third uh pretty good supply of drones at that base maybe we need to transfer some of those to the natural and there they go some scourge gonna get their connections on a couple of corsairs he just gets one in the end but five corsairs remain plus one is done no plus one armor for these uh, flying death bombs. These flying kamikaze missiles. With their little creepy teeth. He's going to be able to catch another one. There we go. Very good job there too. Wow. Time is called doing a great job so far. There's range coming up. Cannot forget that range, boys. That is a very important upgrade that is often forgotten about. 49 drones total. His... Pneumatized Carapace is about to finish. Oh, I clicked him again. I swear I have nothing against Soul Key. I do want to see his build. Just an accidental click. We uh, need to have a fourth base soon. Time is Gold going to move forward to contest the Zealots on the map. And around 10 minutes is when you want that fourth base. Well, he'll be looking to take that here momentarily. Pushing back the Zealots, of course. Not many of them on the field anymore. Just the one Dark Templar moving around. It's going to kill a Ling, but... Overlord Speed is about to finish, so... I don't think that can potentially deny a fourth base. 13. Hydras on the way. Uh, going after these Hydras with that DT. Looking at the wall. It's unlikely he'll be able to break that. Should have Templar by now. There they are. Templar out. And of course, should just be a straight up eight gateway follow up. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, he's only got seven. No, eight. There it is. Eighth one in the natural wall. Forgot about that one. Eight gateway total. Perfect number to just put out a huge army. Dragoons will be added on soon. He's going to get his observers out in a moment. He's just about to catch this DTI. Ah, kind of missed out on that. Kind of missed out on that catch. A little bit unfortunate. More Zelt's going to be sent down to the bottom left because it seems that Time is Gold wants to take this base. He needs to get up on this ramp. If he gets up on the ramp, the Zealots probably won't be able to do anything. But if he runs back into the... Okay, he's going to run behind the mineral patches, which is also a reasonable way to deal with this zealot attack yeah just get in behind there no way the zealots are going to want to take that engagement that that is for sure in fact they just run away because they're almost going to get pincered now the fourth base can start lurkers are out we finally got a serious army for 
soul key on the map he's got quite a few dragoons he's gonna be taking his fourth some templar with this army you never want to take a fight against this this is a nightmare to try and run up this ramp with two templar there you basically need the protoss to not be paying attention at all so you can run up and just gun down the templar otherwise you are gonna eat so much storm damage it's insane and so you know it's unlikely that we're gonna see time is gold break soul key uh, anytime in the near future uh, another thing to note we do not have overlord drop on the way so without the overlord drop we need to get it, like zerg has to go for hive they have to go for hive no other real option uh, we don't have the queen's nest yet He's focusing on just pumping out as many units as he can and getting ready for this fourth base to come up, but there really does need to be a transition. You can't just build Lurker Hydra and not have drop. Uh, you have to... Like, if you're just going to take fights with the Dragoon, Zealot, Templar army, you're never going to trade very well. A lot of Lings being added now. Uh, he is getting plus two attack for these Hydras, but... I expect to see double evolution chamber queen's nest in like basically any second now any second now we should be getting that some lurkers should be morphing down in this area as well really shore up the defenses in bottom left he's making a round of drones i think that time is gold is going to be in a little bit of trouble if this is how he wants to play there's the queen's nest finally gonna get started a second hatchery down in bottom left as well he's focused so heavily on getting a big supply he's actually still ahead in supply 173 to 163 that's crazy this is such a big zerg army the problem is it's just not going to trade well against what protoss has protoss could wipe out this whole army and all the reinforcements if he takes a bad a bad engage with that so he needs really for the Protoss player to run into him. And if the Protoss player is not going to, to attack, and he's just going to sit back and macro and get more bases, then you have to have the backup plan, right? You need to have the double evolution chamber and hive on the way. So he does have that now. It's coming up, but we're 14 minutes in. You could have Defiler by now uh, if you were playing this properly. If you just went straight into hive immediately you can have defiler out by 14 minutes and so this is a little bit behind schedule but maybe it's still going to end up working out this attack not going too well he did snipe a couple of templar on that but i mean the storms are looking great there's no way he's busting through this at the same time though counter attack over towards his fourth that's going to cancel the base he will just sack a few hydras to go ahead and kill that probe excellently done bailing out of this position and keeping that a uh, backstab alive is amazing as well. It's just gotta, gotta go get out of here. Hydras, stupid Hydras running around in uh, awkward directions. More drones, 64 total are ready for this next fight. He's gonna push up onto this high ground now. I like it. No storm available at this base. That is a really scary thing. Uh, if he doesn't have storm there, uh, we could be in a lot of trouble. He's going to be forced to run up this ramp against a ton of lurkers up here. This is perfect, perfect from Time is Gold. Of course, uh, some of the storms are going to end up uh, dealing quite a lot of damage. Coming up from behind with the flank. Hide just coming from different angles as well. Lurkers going to burrow in amidst all of this. Hide just kind of getting stormed to death on that high ground. But look at this. Backstab. Look at this. A surround coming out of time of gold of course the storms are insane once again but he is using up a lot of those spells just to kill these hydras and the lurkers are still present on the high ground this is looking a little bit dangerous and a little bit scary for our uh, zerg pro turned random player last lurker will end up falling a lot more hydras coming oh man those are the type of storms that happened to me where i'm like uh, i'm just never gonna get in there now i lost too much health like everything lost so much health everything's gonna die so quickly i might as well just give up on it ever getting in there 
Only one Overlord down in bottom left. There's no DT on the map right now to potentially take advantage of that, though. Unfortunately, while all of that fighting was going on, uh, Time is Gold did not send units over to the center right. In fact, Sulky doing a great job holding that position. He really needs a Templar up here so bad, though. I can't believe we don't have a Templar at that base. He needs just one temp. One little storm boy behind those. Yeah, like, look, you just pop one storm right there. All these cannons die. So easy. But he just doesn't have it. Good storm on the high ground. Still a lot of lurkers up here, though. And uh, with this, just shoving forward, I think he will break and get in and stop the hydras from killing the base. But man, it is tough running up this high ground with so many lurkers, man. It's just. Painful, super, super painful. And this could have been avoided by having one storm at this base. You can take this out a lot more slowly. You can be a lot more efficient as the Protoss player if you have the Templar to buy time. Coming forward, once again, pushing up onto this high ground. I told you earlier what a deadly position this is to try and break through. Now he's really experiencing it. Time is gold. Still trying to shove up this ramp, but more reinforcements are coming. And I just don't see enough. I don't see enough from time is gold to make it through here. Dropping down in supply. He was ahead in supply until a moment ago. Until he started losing all of those lurkers trying to push up the ramp. So, Solki taking a pretty significant supply lead. With the fourth base on, I say it's significant, but you know what? That's still very close. This is almost, almost Zerg favored, almost. Let's take a look at the upgrades and see where we're at. One one is done. He hasn't started his next armor upgrade though, which I'm a little bit worried about, a little concerned that he's not keeping up on those armor upgrades. He's only got plus two attack as well on Hydras. That's uh, that's unfortunate. Would like to see a little bit more. A little bit more there and also a oh my god there's no defilers no defilers at all dude this is this is not good you need defilers we are 19 minutes into this game and still no defilers available we will get up on this ramp once again oh my gosh trying to hold this ramp with lurkers so tough so many storms just blanketing this army and another storm and another storm going down just killing off an insane number of lurkers but more and more zerg stuff and wow he didn't remake any cannons on that high ground okay that's a little bit surprising the fact that he didn't make those uh, remake any of those cannons is kind of sad and look at that gg time is gold takes this one home without even having to use defilers Ah, uh, some pretty serious mistakes from Mr. Solkey in this game. Not having a Templar behind those cannons being probably the biggest one this game. Uh, maybe struggling a little bit with PVZ, as most people do when it is their off race. He's certainly a killer in ZVP, but struggling just slightly with the PVZ matchup. We'll have to get that worked out properly before he can, uh, you know, stand at some sort of a chance of winning an ASL with random. That's for sure. And we've got another matchup, guys. TVT is coming up next. I wanted to do every matchup that we don't see from Sulky, so all of his off-race matchups. Turns out it's a lot of different matchups. It's a lot of different games, and that's probably the reason well, that is the reason why it's so hard for players to try random. But when a player reaches the level of a uh, like a god status, a flash status, status, um, the number of victories that Sulky's managed to take home, the next challenge is that random is proven by flash. Guys, let's jump into that TVT, see what it's like. He actually did very good in PvP, so I'm kind of excited to see. The long-awaited TVT. I've been teasing you guys all night with this matchup. But here we finally are with Soul Key up in the top right-hand corner. His opponent, Pablo, in the bottom left. Yeah, we don't know who Pablo is, but he is 2,500 on the ladder. 
a nameless Terran. I'm only calling him Pablo because one of his other IDs has Pablo in the name, but we could also call him the barcode. Soul Key, what is he going to pull out against Terran in this matchup, which he probably has the least knowledge in and one one of the deepest matchups we already saw him in pvp he's pretty strong in that matchup where a lot of the skill just comes down to picking the right build and having the good luck to grab the correct hand signal the rock paper scissors matchup here there's a lot more leeway there's a lot more play and it appears like our Barcode Pablo gonna be opening with a gasless fast expand cross map. That's pretty strong The gas expand from soul key is gonna take a little longer to get online And I think he's gonna be able to get away with this no problem cross map. Hey, how are you gonna put on pressure? Let's see if he continues to mine gas after he throws down the factory and when does he get the scout off? Sulky going to be scouting top left first. And the SCV of Pablo goes straight across map. Look at this good luck, this good fortune for our teal, teal Terran player. He knows exactly what the build is. There's no... Well, there's one mining on gas, but... He's certainly not going to be putting on a lot of aggression in this early game, and Pablo's going to be fine to throw down his CC. And we're just going to have to play from behind. No real choice about it. Sulky going to take his own CC now. However, in this matchup, more than any other mirror matchup, I think there's a lot of ways to make comebacks happen. Even if you end up having a build order, it's not like ZVZ, right? Where ZVZ, you can get kind of behind and suddenly the game is just over. Here, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for good engagements, good positioning, and things like drop play can really get you back into the game with this matchup. Bunker started at the front. Pablo just being a bit safe. He knows that there's going to be a Vulture coming across the map any moment. And there it is. Vulture making its way up to the front. Is it going to try to slip by this Bunker? Is he going to go for some kills on the Marines? Let's take a look. Marines. Oh, great block. Oh, buddy. That block was insane. Ouch. First Vulture gets absolutely nothing done. And with mines on the way, that's going to hurt. Soul Key. Feeling pretty bad after that one. And Pablo's going to go ahead and land his barracks over on this right-hand side. Set up a pretty stiff wall in. It'll be hard for Soul Key to sneak by any of these vultures. And I doubt that he'll give it another try, considering how badly that first attempt went. And yeah, there you go. I... I don't know. Can you slip a vulture past there? It might be possible. But Sulky instead just going to lay down mines. And work towards gaining map control. Triple factory out of Sulky. Back at home. Here for our Tyrell Terran Pablo. Going to throw a wraith out on the map. And I think that's a great decision. After the early CC after the gas is fast expand when he's got the wall if there was an attack coming it's super unlikely that uh, he would be able to attack with siege mode that we would see sulky attack with siege mode and some sort of anti-air whether that be turrets a whole bunch of marines or a goliath it's just not totally possible to have all of those things at the same time and have enough ground forces to deal with something like an SCV pull that could just break his attack. So he's got that anti-air. He's got that wraith for harassing the ground units that could be outside of his natural. And 
He's going to utilize this instead of flying across the map, which actually could have done quite some damage. If he had just flown his Wraith all the way to the other side, there's one Marine and the armory is not done. The armory is not even close to being done. And so missing a little bit of an opportunity for damage here, Pablo's going to instead prioritize getting rid of this barracks, removing that scouting information on the side of Pablo or on the side of Solki and Solki is just going to be running around setting up mines while getting this anti-air online. One Goliath going to pop out in a moment. Comsats coming up as well. No comsats back at home for Pablo just yet, but he's adding on more factories. He's going to deny the ability for Solki to add more factories for a little bit. Now that the barracks has gone down, he can't go up to four factories, so he can't match the production of Pablo. And we'll see if Pablo uses that to his advantage or whether he just wants to slowly push out and take his third base. He's going to need some Goliaths or at the very least a Comsat. You can see the double scan. He sees the factory count and the natural. And when you see five factories like this, I think that Solki might start to sweat. He did start another factory just before the barracks went down. So just a second before that fell, he started that. And barracks is going to start as well. But with only four factories, he's going to be a little bit behind the production of Pablo, who's now sitting on five. First scan comes out. He's going to be able to clear the, both of these mines. Ooh, that was close. One Goliath here for soul key he's also got no wait he doesn't have plus one on the way uh oh that could be painful there's the plus one just as i look at it he starts that upgrade but he's well behind pablo's position and it's possible that pablo could get plus two with quite a bit of leeway uh on soul keys plus two which could open up a timing especially with this extra uh, production that's available. We haven't seen any drops so far, which I'm a little bit surprised about. There's the dropship. Since he opened with the one factory into Starport into Wraith, I expected that a little bit sooner. But now that he's removed the barracks on this side, maybe he can slip this dropship all the way to the other side of the map without soul keys seeing single marine is it going to spot this it did it did indeed spot that but was soul key paying attention is he going to see it coming he throws down a scan in the main which makes me feel like he didn't uh, get a view on that while this dropship is coming in pablo's gonna try and push out with his tanks now the vultures jumping on top of this is pretty good but they don't have mines to help clear out those tanks. And I think Pablo got the better of that, which may cause, you know, some frustration for Sulky. While the attack is coming in, the drop into the main is gonna deal so much damage. He decided to drop one vulture on the outside though. And so he may not do as much damage as he would have liked, but he killed a few SCVs in the main and he delayed this third. I think that's very reasonable damage. The drop over at the natural as well. Just try to pick off another SCV or two. One goes down. He picks up again. Pablo is looking very, very good with a decent supply lead. Soul Key is having a rough time in TVT so far. We haven't seen very many TVTs out of him. And so we're taking a look at this game, which of course isn't uh, against a... A uh, strong professional player, but still a strong ladder player nonetheless should give Sulky a hard time in this matchup. One that he hasn't been known for. He hasn't been practicing for much. Spotting out this starport. One wraith being made at a time. More factories added on now. Is it time to add a second starport for Pablo? This can be a, a really effective way uh, to take an advantage over your opponent as they add on more starports you actually just add even more than they do 
and keep control of the air. Also could switch into Valkyrie play. Instead, try to wipe out all of the wraiths and then take control of the air for yourself. So far, neither player really focusing on airplay. Instead, trying to bust out is Pablo. Breaking through the contain rather swiftly. Opening up the position. It's looking rather weak for Soul Key. Look at how many more tanks there are. With only two more coming up for reinforcement. I don't think he can maintain this contain for much longer. As more units make their way to the front. Pablo just about ready to break out. And in fact, he could just send vultures through this narrow path heading northward to get onto the other side of the map and try to cause some confusion. If he lays mines in the top left as well, that's some great scouting information. Let's take a look at both players' bases. Three, four, five, six, seven factories to the six factories of Pablo. So he's actually a little bit behind in terms of the factories the factory count but making a move over to this left hand side gonna take out these two tanks and he does so with relative ease breaking once again the containment that light containment that Solki was trying to hold on Pablo has been broken out of once again in a drop make its way over to the third base this is gonna deal so much damage Solki eating a huge amount of damage at this base so many SCVs falling right now, and Pablo is extending that lead even further. A mine comes over. This was from the, the original drop that Pablo did. That mine... Oh, another one almost connects. 51 SCVs to 70. It's going to be very hard for Solki to win this one from this position. Quite far behind so far. Will be throwing down a fourth base. It's a bit slower than the fourth of Pablo, though. And he is going to be continuing to push forward. Solki's army looking a bit bare bones. Only a few tanks, but they're all sieged up and ready to fight. Plus two is about to finish. This is the timing. This is the moment. Pablo going to pull the trigger. Plus two just finished. He throws down the D-Matrix. Going to try and push through all of these forces. Setting the vultures forward to try and eat some of these shots. Tanks have to focus fire down the opponent's tanks, but they're not dealing nearly as much damage as the tanks of Pablo, and he will break through. Pablo has opened up the position with only one... Okay, there's two more tanks up to the north. One over here. On the west side. The east side, excuse me. The west is looking weak as well, though. Some of these tanks need to be brought forward to reinforce this line. His plus two is a little bit behind, but it's almost done. Just needs to buy some more time for those all-important upgrades. Good scans there. Still a relatively even game. You can see we're dead even on supply. Slight advantage in workers for Pablo. But this is not a unplayable. Sorry guys, I had to sneeze. Dropship heading around the top side of the map. He's going to go for the base at 12 o'clock. This drop has done so much damage throughout this game. It's getting kind of crazy. This is going to get a bunch more kills over at top center. Whereas we were just about to reach parity with these workers. Soul Key now knocked back. About 10 supply behind his opponent. Bringing the wraiths over now finally will remove that dropship threat. But has the damage already been too much? Soul Key hasn't been expanding into the areas where uh, he is taking control. Instead, he's just been sitting back on even bases and trying to hold down this contain. Coming forward, going to grab this science vessel at least. Picking up the science vessel is nice. And now that he has air control, 
Can start to pick off a few of those siege tanks. Pablo really let go of the Wraith number, didn't continue to build those, and only kept one starport active, whereas, as you can see here, double starport play from Soul Key, really committing to those forces. We're gonna have plus three in just a moment. Plus three, not as big of a deal as plus two, but it's still going to make a difference to these fights if that plus three finishes and we just now see Soul Key starting his own plus three, taking out all of the Goliaths over this small army on the left hand side, but four Goliaths are gonna come up, start to push that back. We will not get that final tank and may lose a couple of wraiths. He does lose two wraiths. Drop heading out once again. He's gotta get his wraiths over here to deal with this. It's been absolute, just constant harassment from Pablo. Always up in Solki's business, dealing so much damage. Solki is lost control of the bottom right. Gonna try and make a move with these vultures. Take out a couple of, oh my gosh, that killed so many, so many vultures just died there. Was that even worth it? I'm not sure. Uh, might as well have just killed that tank with the vultures rather than lose so many to that one single mine. Wraiths here, our cloak tries to get the science vessel. Can he get it? There we go. He does get it. Some good micro, only losing one wraith for that kill. Not bad at all, but here is Pablo taking half the map now. Are we gonna get into a battle cruiser game? Our first game with Soul Key TVT. And we might actually go all the way. Those capital ships. I guess he lost the barracks again. How is Sulky's control in a 30 minute game? I wonder. Is he is he gonna be able to completely out skill his Terran opponent just based on how quick he is? Or will he, you know, lack the experience in TVT to overcome this S rank Terran player? I actually hope that we don't see anything get broken because I want to see Sulky try to use uh, his carrier, not his carriers, excuse me, his battle cruisers. See what kind of skill he can bring with that unit. Pablo has been pretty passive. He hasn't really done an all in attack. He hasn't tried to unseage everything and just go. He's been slowly picking away at the position. Now Sulky gonna come and take some of that position back. He's moving everything, including the uh, tank line back a few meters. Pushing Pablo into a bit of an awkward position. However, he wasn't able to uh, hold down this left hand side. And so a few vultures will slip by, creating a bit of a problem for Sulky in the top left as he's trying to get these bases online. You know that Pablo already has all of his bases and he's setting up two more armories. He's going, wait, the four armories? What the hell is that for? What do we have four armories on the way? That doesn't make any sense. We've already upgraded most of the ground army upgrades. Certainly, we don't need four armories to finish off that last upgrade. Oh, and he forgot some of these vultures over in this top left-hand corner. That is a brutal, brutal set of vultures. These are going to get so many kills, and he's not going to be able to finish the command center. Very annoying stuff. We're going to see some more uh, starports start up in just a moment. Should be adding on that. Physics lab shortly as well. Big chunk of drop ships. Maybe Soul Key doesn't want to let the game go this far. Got some scans going down. He's checking to see uh, where the race are. Where where is his opponent's anti-air? There's not much anti-air on this side. Maybe Soul Key can pick everything up, drop on this high ground, and make uh, this position a very difficult for Pablo to hang on to. I can't believe we're not building this CC, by the way. That is unfortunate. Army moving down. 
towards the bottom right hand corner is coming in with the drops he changes his mind at the last moment gonna turn and move around this turret uh oh a lot of Goliaths there Goliaths coming up onto the high ground as well here we go big drop on this high ground so many tanks so many Goliaths as well are going to set up a lot of SCVs being pulled to try and break this tank position good D matrix there on the ramp as well that's gonna buy a lot of time it's gonna try and try to force this army back all right that's tough tough getting up this ramp he's having a really hard time pushing up this position these Goliaths are all going to fall that's so bad so so bad for Pablo and look at this he's gonna lose his star ports and the double armory that's making one one if Sulky can bring in a secondary drop he's gonna crush this position oh Goliaths are present can he maybe oh no he's not gonna be able to kill any of these drops and this huge drop will seal the deal in the bottom right oh wow a huge drop force a uh, drop ship force coming in for Pablo as well dropping right on top of this however it's not going that well he definitely has more drop ships than Solki but Solki clears that easily with his uh, earlier dropped tanks gonna be able to stop this counter drop in its tracks break down these armories ah he's gonna finish the plus one Solki not gonna be able to deny that and so Valkyries en masse are being made rather than battle cruisers three valkyries at a time a little bit of an interesting choice they generally don't kill drop ships that fast at the same time counter coming over here for pablo pablo gonna try and hit this exact same position and things are gonna get a little bit weird now soul key clears out the bottom left and now pablo gonna clear the top left or bottom right excuse me and top left have been cleared this is uh this is going to be an interesting game we might not get to battle cruises in this game actually uh if it's going to be this scrappy with both players denying bases on either side of the map things are going to get very very strange now army is pushing its way over towards the third base of pablo i'm not sure if that's a worthy target for this army i would much rather see him try to clean out top left potentially also set up these tanks on low ground make sure he doesn't lose this cc uh, that is a very very big deal keeping that cc alive pablo moving more tanks up to try and save this base i would love to see him just abandon the position and he will pick up with his drop ships get out of this area there's only a few hundred minerals left there i guess around a thousand with a thousand gas you can mine that later if you can eventually clear out this army dropping uh, scvs on this is kind of funny and he's not targeting the dropship so there we go finally does get that but get some extra damage out of those scvs more than i would have expected command center has been stopped from mining though this is a big deal soul key unfortunately cannot mine from this cc whereas over in the bottom right hand corner pablo still able to mine i mean he should bring his tanks around to this bottom side and just start to hit that cc i think that would be a much better use of his time but instead he's going to go for the bottom center this is a great move getting up on this bottom center need to target down some of these drop ships drop ships are going to be targeted somewhat but a lot of this stuff is going to get out of the drops the tanks on the low ground are trying to fight back but this is way too much coming out of these drop ships soul key will be shoved away the six o'clock remains standing and the top right cannot mine what do we have for mining for soul key just these two bases is everything you can muster and now bottom right is going to be broken uh-oh soul key is looking to be in a tough spot a lot more drop ships are coming out on the map he has to make the right decision with this army or he could be out of this game looks like he's gonna go for six o'clock immediately straight down to six o'clock but everything's been loaded back up there will be a counter drop to deal with this can sulky hold on against the counter drop oh the mines are so sick these mines are gonna do so much damage oh 
absolutely clearing out everything from soul key the timing on those vultures coming into this position was insane just clearing absolutely everything sulky was desperate to get sieged up before the counter drop came in but it was the wrong time to siege as all of those vultures were arriving gets an amazing trade now i'm gonna start flying around dropping on top of different uh tanks flying into the main base once again in bottom right sulky gonna try and get a good position but at the same time, drops are going to be loaded up again. Another counter drop available. Can he pick off some of these drop ships before they can fully unload? No. Not able to pick off any of those drops. And this was not much... That was not a lot of stuff in these drops. I would love to see Solki pull this army away. Put it to use somewhere else. Because it's barely denying anything. And it's a lot of wasted supply. This is good. Putting some tanks down on this high ground is fantastic he will get rid of that tank so can start to hit this cc maybe be able to drive that away eventually the cc still not mining and a big drop is heading towards 12 he's got to counter drop it he's got to bring everything together to deal with this so a little bit slow the drop comes down this is so many units dropping right on top of each other Army coming from the south. Is he going to be able to clear everything? It looks like Solki will, in fact, win this battle. But at a heavy cost. Well, this is quite a bit of his SCV count. And many of his siege tanks and goliaths went down in that fight. He's reloading. How many dropships are there? Seven dropships to just six of Solki. So he's always going to be dropping less. Also, these drops are way more healthy than the drops of Solki. Which will contribute to these fights. Pushing forward now with this army. Solki going to kill a bunch of supply depots, but not much more. Heading now towards 6 o'clock. He's going to try and break this. Oh, he's losing some tanks to the tank line. Just north of this position. Dropping on 6 o'clock. No need to siege right now. Just kill all the SCVs. We'll clear that out. Kill the command center as well. However, bottom right is going to get taken. Dropship's coming forward. Is he going to drop on top of this? No. Changing trajectory. Heading up to possibly the 12 o'clock. If he kills 12 o'clock, there's nothing else mining on this map for Soul Key. He could be completely out of luck. If this base goes down, a drop coming back down onto bottom right. He's going to drop right on top of this. Looks like he may be able to break that, but his last mining base is just about to go down. If only Solki was mining in top left. He would have something to work with, but as it stands, this base over here is going to start to mine. And I don't know if Solki can deny that from this high ground. I'm not sure. Is doing his best to make do with what he's got. He's still very close in supply, extremely close into supply to Pablo. But will he be able to save this game? It's so close, guys. Some of the dropships went down. Sometimes that's all the opposing Terran player needs is just kill some of the dropships. There's only three left. Three dropships left now to seven. And so the drops will be so much more powerful. Coming from Pablo. Ooh, bringing out the SCVs to take this last fight. Tank's gonna siege up just out of range, I think, of this gas geyser. He would love to hit that gas geyser. Bringing some forces up from the south at the same time. Drop's gonna come down on this. Oh, he is gonna mine from this, but he's being hit by the... Tanks on high ground. All of this is going to get cleaned up. And GG is called. Pablo takes the game home. An intense, close game, though, between Soul Key and Pablo. I really do enjoy the like, heavy dropship games like this where we don't get to a full mine out case. I was interested to see Soul Key's ability to control 
in the late game though with battle cruisers i thought that was going to be a lot of fun but it's also cool to see uh, this type of terran match where uh, all the bases don't get mined out we don't get the split map situation and just drop ships crazy crazy drop ship plays back and forth back and forth soul key not able to make it work though seems like a few of his moves were just slightly off like the timing on his plus two was a bit slow the way that he was expanding he was trying to contain pablo but he didn't have the muscle nor did he have the expansions around the map to take advantage of his position and pablo just slowly but surely eked out of his main base into this third and then into the fourth and the endless endless drops we're really making Solki's life a living hell. Dealing so much damage to each of these mineral lines, but that is it, guys. We've covered every single off-race matchup for Solki in this series. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I thought it would be very interesting to see how Solki was preparing for his upcoming finals, but imagine my surprise when i saw all off race him just messing around on the ladder playing 11 games a day of not zerg while he's preparing for his zvt finals pretty interesting stuff i wonder how that's going to pan out in the end sulky if he takes this next asl i hope to see him do some random if not in the asl at least in some other tournaments but hopefully in the asl we can always dream right well that's it for today guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one